Hello and welcome to South County Spotlight on Frontier Community Access Television. I'm Chris Collins. Today in the spotlight, a story that a lot of people are talking about. The South County EMS service. Where will it live over the next several years? Will it stay in Deerfield? Will it go to Waitley? It's a big controversy right now and one that has drawn a lot of comments on both sides. One of the people that's been the most vocal in his desire to keep the South County EMS in Deerfield is my guest today. John Pachorek, former selectman and a member of the Finance Committee in Deerfield. We also had hoped to have his wife Sharon in. Uh, she was unfortunately unable to be here today, but she was the one that spearheaded the signature petition that put this article on a special town meeting warrant where the members of that meeting basically advised the selectman to take any steps necessary to keep the ambulance service in Deerfield. So John, welcome. I appreciate you coming in. Uh, former selectman now on the Finance Committee and a vocal opponent of the idea of the ambulance service leaving Deerfield. Specifically, what is your objection to the idea of going to Whaley? My objection is very simple. When we started out, I had no problems with the ambulance as it was being run. And I still don't have a problem. I still support SCEMS. However, I do have a problem when you have misinformation coming out. And when I'm saying misinformation, I mean that very politely because the misinformation was actually the Board of Selectmen and some BOO members, Board of Oversight members, lying and saying they're being thrown out of South Deerfield, and that's why they wanted to go to Whiteley. And then at one of the meetings, we had a finance committee meeting, and people asked me, he said, well, what, what do we have for options? I said, well, we have no control over the South Deerfield Fire District but we can certainly ask for a courtesy meeting with them. And we had the courtesy meeting. And at the courtesy meeting, they made it very clear that they are not being thrown out of the fire station. They can stay as long as they want. They explained their rationale for the rent charges that they were charging. And everything, when I went in there, I went in with the idea that I was going to tell them I was very displeased with their procedures because they obviously weren't doing the right thing. Well, I come to find out that they did the right thing. They did everything that they're supposed to do. They supported the fire district and they did a good job at it. And then I found out there was a rift between the old fire chief, Stanley Stokarski, and his brother-in-law, Mr. Wolfram. And there was a rift because they were putting out misinformation and that's why I helped write the petition and say the misinformation must stop. And so far, that still hasn't stopped. And even as of town meeting that we had on the 25th, they still were putting out misinformation. So let's back up for a second. Now, the way this is set up, as I understand, Skems, is it's all three town meetings have to vote for any kind of a change. So to, in order to move to Waitley, every town, Deerfield, Waitley, and Sunderland has to agree on town meeting floor to do this, right? Correct, as far as and, I know. And I think your, you, one of your points, if I understand it, is that Deerfield's bearing more than half the cost of this, and yep. you only have a single vote, basically. Well, the single vote, I reread the SCEMS contract, the MOU, and what it says is they have two votes. They have two votes, one for Mr. Russo and one for Mr. Gilmore. So, but they still have only one third. And as I stated at that special town meeting, can somebody explain to me why we only have 33% vote when we're paying 52% of the bill. And then I gave him an example. I says, for example, suppose Whiteley says, I want to move this SCEMS operation to Whiteley. And they vote aye. They have two votes and they say yes. Tom Feidenkevitz was in the paper today saying that he wants it to go to Whiteley. So all he has to do is say, second the motion. And guess what? Deerfield's vote is irrelevant. We don't have a vote. Yeah, we got 33%, but we don't have our true percentage of vote. We should have 50%. Now, I gave an example on that Monday night saying the way this should be broken down is very simple. Whiteley should receive one vote because they pay about 17% of the bill. Sunderland pays roughly 30%, a little over 30%. Between the two, he, they should have two votes. Between those three, two towns, they have 48% of the vote. And yet, even though they have 48% of the vote, it's a question whether a dog wags a tail or the tail wags a dog. Because what happens is we've only got one third vote. Once they second that motion to go to Whateley, it don't make any difference. 
our vote is absolutely worthless. And if they wanted to have a true representative proportion, they should have a proportion that's equal to your, your weighted thing. They should be following the one man, one vote. Now let me explain to you the historical perspective of this. When we had the meeting at Frontier Regional in the cafeteria, several people brought up that they wanted to have their adequate representation on that board. And yet the two people we have on the board didn't care. They turned around, did what they wanted to do, and they gave the town away. Because now, no matter what we say, we can be outvoted by the other two towns because they carry 67% of the vote and we've got 33%, but yet we pay 52% of the bill. I said to anybody in the audience and anywhere else, explain to me where 33% equals 52%. You want us to pay 52%? We paid a 52%. I want the 52% say. Now, in terms of, of scams moving out of Deerfield, I've heard a couple of different objections to it. One is that historically, the ambulance service has always been in Deerfield. That's one. And, and that's, that's one of the arguments. The other one is the concern about response times. Now, I, in terms of response times, my understanding is that when the Deerfield ambulance was in effect or when the, the previous incantation where each town had their own ambulance service, response times could have been as long as 18 minutes. Yep. Now the response time with scams is down to, I think, seven minutes. Yep, that's correct. I, I mean, it's, it's hard to understand and, and make, make me understand why it's bad to, why that's a problem. I mean, I would think that having that response time shaved down to the way at level it is would be a good thing. And all three towns would like to, to keep things that way. I think they would. There's only one problem with it. What they're telling you is not totally accurate because going from the new facility in Whateley, what they're proposing, to the old fire station is two miles. Now, they're turning around, for example, at the last town meeting, they said, oh, we can do that in 30 seconds. They think lights and sirens can do everything. But you know something? To do that trip in 30 seconds, they've got to come out of the Whateley town hall. They have to take a right after a stop sign. They get to go through the switchback on Long Plain Road and Pine Street, and they can't do that very fast. Then they have to come out to a dangerous intersection, and then they have to take a left to get down so they can take a right on 5 and 10. Now, I did this in my truck twice. Okay, it's not an ambulance. You didn't have, an, you didn't have a siren, did you? I didn't have a siren. Okay. I didn't have flashing lights. I didn't put my flashers on. I just drove along at normal speed. And what happened is, as I was driving along, one light changed on Elm Street, and I lost 10 or 15 seconds there. And then I got up to the second light, and I stopped my time watch. And when I stopped it, it was four minutes. Now, I did this twice. I went along with somebody else, and that took them four minutes and 20 seconds. But they're saying that they can do it in 30 seconds. Now, if you can do it in 30 seconds, you know how fast you'd have to be driving? Well, I mean, in, to be fair, I mean, an ambulance is going to drive faster, and they are going to have the sirens and the lights, which I you're agree. not going to have on a regular vehicle. So, I mean, isn't it a kind of a false analogy a little bit? No, not at all. Is my analogy false, saying it's going to take three to four minutes? Or is their analogy false saying, we can make that in 30, min 30 seconds? To do it in 30 seconds for two miles, they have to travel 120 miles an hour. Do you really think that they can come out of the Whiteley Town Hall at 120 miles an hour and get through those switchbacks, get to the stop sign, which is dangerous, and then get down to 5 and 10? Somehow I don't believe it. They tell you they can do it, but I don't believe it. I don't believe it even if they said they were on a straightaway from point A to point B, they couldn't go 120 miles an hour with that ambulance. And if they were, they should be fired. Okay, let's go back to the other argument, that this, this idea that Deerfield's ambulance service has always been here for something like 47 years, and it shouldn't yeah. go. I mean, isn't there an argument to be made that, you know, maybe times change, situations change, maybe it's time to think about a different way, especially when you consider the fact that you're going from a basic level paramedic service, the basic level EMT service to a paramedic level, which is much more advanced and can probably do a lot more on the scene than, than the basic counterparts could. Yes, and where do you usually put your ambulance? You put it where the bulk of the people are. Right now, they're going to move it so that it will service a few hundred people faster from Whiteley, because you've got seven or eight houses along Pine Street. If you come out of Pine Street and you take a left and you take your first right going on to South Main Street, you get a cemetery there. There's nobody to service there unless somebody has a heart attack in the cemetery. Guess what? Right there at that intersection of Thayer Street is halfway between the, where they're located now and the new fire station. 
So when they say they can service it, and they lied because they said, oh, we can serve all of South Deerfield faster. That's totally untrue. Even with lights and sirens, they can't do it faster. The bottom line is they can service up to Thayer Street in about the same amount of time. Maybe they can get a few houses down Thayer Street and a couple of houses down on South Main Street. But beyond that, that's about it. The only other place is uh, River Road. They can service some houses down there faster. But to have them say that they can do it in 30 seconds, that is absolutely ridiculous and doesn't even hold a test. So I guess what would be, do you have a, an alternate idea in terms of, would you rather just have them stay in South Deerfield? I mean, I guess it, it's, I understand the objection, but is, do you have an idea of a better plan than the one currently on the table? The plan that I got now is since they come up with this false analogy saying we're being thrown out and it's not true, then what should happen is they should stay right where they are because they're not being thrown out until they find a better place. Now, whether it takes a year or two years, so be it. But if they turn around and run to Waitley, they're looking at construction costs down there and now they're saying, oh, we're going to look at, front, at uh, Frank County Tech building the thing for them. That's an option. And meanwhile, how long are they going to string along Whateley by doing that? That's not fair to Whateley. And it's been in there for 47 years or however long. Well, however long it's been, it's still where the bulk of the people are. It services at least 80% of the people very well. And for the little bit that they could pick up from Whateley, it's not worth moving. There's no reason to move. If, if it's not broken, why break it? And what they're trying to do is they're trying to break it so they can fix it. Why do you think, do you think that this is just an effort to try and, as you said, build a little empire? I mean, you, I think that's exactly you what You had it said is. before we went on the air that your, your main problem, even though you support scams, the main problem you have is the way this is being set up, that this is an unprecedented first sort of beta test of this kind of a setup where you had a regional ambulance service, although these kinds of services in other parts of the country are pretty common, not common necessarily for here. You don't think this is going to work in the long run? Remember when the uh, police departments were looking at merging? Yeah, and they're still talking about that. I doubt it. Okay. Okay. When they were talking about it, the person that they brought in to give them a study made a key point. The key point was this. If everybody doesn't get a fair shake, the things are doomed to fail. Town of Deerfield is not getting a fair shake now because of our voting percentage. If they want to stay with SCEMS and continue work with SCEMS, they have to fix that. And the only ones that can fix that are the three selectmen have to agree to turn around and say to their representatives, which is Mark Gilmore and Mark, Matt Russo, they have to tell them very clearly that they want this thing to be fixed. And if they don't want to fix it, then they ought to get off the board. Matt, Mark should not even be on there anyway. We had a study two, three years ago from Department of Revenue. And they said that the selectmen should be appointing people and not self-appointing. But they still do it anyway, because that will give the perceived thing, that perceived uh, notion that these people are very interested in this and that's what they want to go. And it's obvious. If you listen to the two speakers who want to support scams the way it is and to move to Whateley, they think everything's lovey-dovey. Oh, we, can, we all get along. We all agree. Oh, we don't need any more vote because we all agree. You know, their focus should be this. It can't be just run an ambulance service without regard to cost. And if they got their concern, they should be concerned about the cost for the town of Deerfield. They shouldn't be concerned about other costs other than what's the taxpayer have to pay and how much is he contributing and is it a fair deal for him? And is it a fair deal that they're getting the proper votes they're supposed to? Because they're not. They don't care about that. Let's talk about the numbers, since you are on the Finance Committee. I mean, we keep hearing about how this is, you know, Deerfield's paying 52% of the cost. What, is it, what does that turn, translate into in real numbers and operating numbers? Roughly $650,000. This is per year? Per year. Mm -hmm. 650000 Now take that six fifty, and realize that you're only servicing one client on day or less on average. If you want a better proposal of what could be done, you could turn around and bring it back and look out for Deerfield's interest only and say maybe it's time to put it back with the fire station. The fire station said that they could stay there for nothing. 
They only charge now because it scams. They don't want the 800 pound gorilla in the room dictating what they can and can't do. But wouldn't that essentially destroy the, the scams model? Yeah, it would. And you're okay with that? I'm not happy with it, but let's put it this way. At some point you gotta look and say, what's best for the voters of the town of Deerfield? Somebody's got to ask that question. Do you think it's better to go back to the days of a single ambulance service where you have basic um, level service rather than paramedic level service? I mean, is that, is that no, in the best interest? No, there's one level in between. But that's being phased out is my understanding. The I intermediate level is being phased out. And eventually, basic level uh, service is going to have to either, either the people who have basic uh, certification have to take the test necessary to become paramedic level. That's my understanding that the, that's the, the, the way the state is going on this. I don't know the way the state's going because I haven't followed that. All I know is if I had my choice right now, I'd rather keep scams. But in order to keep scams, they've got to turn around and do two things. Number one, correct the voting inequity. They don't want to correct it. Don't expect me to support it. It's as simple as that. To do that, wouldn't it require ripping up the current setup and then doing an, an entirely new charter that essentially no. gives Deerfield a way to vote? No. no. How would it work? Because that, to me, would seem like that would be the poison pill right there. If you, if you have to tear it up and get all three talents to vote again, what's the chance that they're have, all going to go along Why do you have with? to tear it up? I don't know. All you're, you have you're, to you're, is you're, you're, change one paragraph. Okay. I would love to hear because that, that to me seems to be a crucial part of this. If there that is, is a crucial part. If it's of a it. relatively simple change, that's one thing. But it's sim it's relatively simple except for one thing. Like happened at Frontier Regional. People fought it for 40 years or 50 years trying to change it, and they refused to change it. And you know what required the change? Finally, they went to court, and the judge ordered it to be corrected. That's why they finally did it. And then after they did it, one of the towns turned around and didn't like it, so they didn't put it on their warrant. So they had to re-vote it again a second year later because one town, since they were losing a vote, didn't like it. And what do you think is going to happen here? You think every town's going to turn around and say, yeah, let's just change this thing? They don't have to change it. But not changing it, they're basically going to lose their service. That's what they're going to do. We're talking, with, we're talking with John Pachorka of the Deerfield Finance Committee talking about scams, and obviously some, he has some very strong opinions on it. Not a lot of people have complained about the service. In fact, most people seem to like it. They seem to like the fact that there are quicker response times. There, there hasn't been any service-related complaints that I know of, significant ones. Um, if people are happy with it, doesn't that not have anything? Does that not have any bearing on this conversation? A little bit. Yeah. It's uh, good that people are happy with it. I'm basically happy with it, except for one thing. When we were at Frontier and they told them to get our share of vote. And our representatives thought they were smarter than everybody else, and they wanted one-third vote. They were doing a disservice to the town, as I explained during that town meeting. If anybody had signed on to that agreement in the civilian world, in a regular job contract type of service, they would have been fired to turn around and pay 52% of the bill and only get one-third of the say. They would have been fired. No ifs, ands, or buts. And anybody who signed on and rubber stamped that thing would have been fired. And anybody else who signed the contract would have been fired. Now, they may not like what I say or how I say it, but you know, those are the facts of life. Everything I've said here is true. The only one thing I found out that I made a mistake on on that Monday night was when I thought there was only one member from, on the Board of Oversight from each town. I found out after reading the thing that there, there were two. And all they have to do to change this thing is they have to go to their agreement and change it to say you will receive a proportional vote instead of a vote for one, one, person, one vote each. And that's, that's selling a town down the drain. I don't care how you cut it. If they had cared about the town, because people change. After people change, you never know who's going to go on that board of oversight. And you should have a fair vote representing our town, and we don't have that. So that change would require, I assume, a town meeting vote in all three towns to change I don't them. know if it would or not. Well, you, you had mentioned that in previous issues that have arisen, like with Frontier, that people went to court. You're not suggesting that there be a court action on no, this? No, I'm not suggesting that at all. I don't want there to be a court action. I want these lovey-dovey people that are on the Board of Oversight that always agree on everything, and that's using their, their own phraseology, their own words, I want them to turn around, come up with it, and say, we recommend this because we all agree. 
and I'll bet 10 to 1 that you won't get agreement because the town that's got the weakest vote will turn around and say, well, I'm not going to lose my vote. So if they don't want to lose their vote, it, the thing dies, and that's the way it goes. And if they don't want to support it, guess what? Without being fair and equal to both Deerfield and Sunderland and Whateley, this thing's going to fail. It's a question of time. It's going to fail. Obviously, watching the footage from that town meeting, emotions are running really high on this issue. You strike me as someone, and I've known you for a long time, who doesn't really get angry. No, but I don't. You seem incredibly angry about this. No, I'm not angry. You, you, I, you seem like you are. I am convinced. And the thing that got me fired up was when I found out the selectmen were lying. That's what bothered me. I said, in 18 years, I never had to lie. Why are they doing it now? And they still haven't owned up to it except for one of them. One of them stood up and apologized for lying. Well, the one that originally said that there was a threat of being, quote, kicked out was Mark Gilmore. Now, Mark Gilmore is up, I believe, for re-election this year. Yep. Um, is this enough to get John Pachorek to come out of retirement and make a bid for selectmen? I don't know whether I would want to or not. I really would prefer to stay out of it. I know that, that you got off the board and, and there was, you had some health issues that were yeah. directly related to the stress. That's right. I can't imagine that this is real good for your stress level. No, it's level, not. So. And that's, that's one of the reasons I'm reluctant to run. But I can tell you, I've been asked by dozens of people to run because they say it's time to make a change because the leadership we got in town now has given things away. Now, whether I jump into the ring, if I decide to jump into the ring, it'll be uh, after I come back from vacation and I'll make a decision then. Okay. But I prefer that the selectmen that are there own up to what they did and correct what is wrong. They won't even address it. Now, this petition was brought up to the Board of Selectmen on one night, and they blew everybody off. They danced around the issues and blew everybody off. When this was brought up on town meeting, I could have gotten 500 signatures to require a special town meeting, but I didn't. I said, no, I'm not going to do anything that's going to cost the town any money. And I said... A couple of hundred signatures should be enough to give them the message. Do you think it did? I think that I tried to do my job in explaining it, and I don't think they still got it. I think they're still digging in because Mark Gilmore's only comment was that, well, this is non-binding, so we don't have to listen to him. That's his, that's his only comment. Other than after the meeting, I turn around, I'm talking to somebody, and he's reaching over the person pointing finger at me saying, you're the misinformation, you're the guy who's causing all the problems. Well, it does, it does sound like there's, a lot, there's some personalities involved here, but I guess to wrap up, what is, what is the next step? I mean, where, where do you see this movement that you're a part of going from here? Are you going to make a bid to go to town meeting in the spring and try and change the language? Will you try and block the skims move? What, what's the plan? My plan right now is very simple. Go on vacation and enjoy it. <laughs> okay. When I come back from vacation, I'll make a decision at that point in time what should be done. And I plan on going in to visit the selectmen one night and say, you've got this petition. I would like to know where you stand and what you're going to do about it. And if they blow me off that time, then I'll see what I have to do to make this a binding resolution. Or the other thing is I have no other choice but to defund scams. That would be the finance committee vote to defund scams. Not scams. It's a town meeting vote that defunds it. All right, so what you're saying is if, if you don't get some kind of... I want some resolution. You want some resolution or some kind of a guarantee from the Board of Selectmen that they'll keep the ambulance service in Deerfield at all costs. Yeah. If you don't get it, you are going to push to defund SCIMS on town meeting floor. It, I don't know, but I will certainly consider that. Okay. What about uh, Selectman Fiden Kevitt's offer in Sunderland to have you guys come in? Because he, he wanted to have you and Sharon come in and talk about this. Jack Pachurik was and his wife Sharon were the major, major people that brought this petition. I ask, I plead with Jack Pachurik to get in contact. We're gonna have another meeting probably next, next week sometime, either Tuesday or Thursday, to come to the meeting and participate in the, in the discussion. Help us, we've looked. Um, Jack has been on the Finance Committee. He, we need help. What we're, this service means so much more than to than to fight over. Dude, I have no one. I have heard no one say they don't want the service. I have no heard no one except that that doesn't think that is doing a good job for the for the.
Do we have everything right? Not yet. We're working. But I haven't heard those things. So I plead with Jack. It's easy to throw stones. It's easy to throw darts. Work with us. Tell us what your thoughts are. We're trying to run, we're trying to run an EMS system at what we thought to do it at an affordable cost. Mm -hmm. you, so state, he need, they need to help us. I got no problem going in to talk to Tom because I've known Tom for years and years and he's a nice guy. And uh, I would like to discuss this with him. But my concern is why does he want to talk to Sharon and me when he can go talk to Mark and Mark and Matt? Well, the reason he don't want to go talk to them is because he listens to them all the time. And obviously, they don't have the pulse of the town. Is that why he wants me to come in? I don't know. Is he going to try and sweet talk me into keeping us going? I like the idea that SCEMS is very functional, operational. They do a good job. But when they put out misinformation like that, they can service all of South Deerfield faster from the Whiteley location. That's an outright lie. And anybody with a half a brain can figure that out. But yet they made that statement on the town meeting floor. That's the misinformation they keep throwing out there. They think they can say anything they want, do whatever they want, and they're just going to get it because people are going to rubber stamp their vote. I'm not going to rubber stamp their vote. I'm going to call them to question and see what they're going to do. And if they don't do nothing on it, then I'll have to decide what I want to do. He's on the Finance Committee. He's a former selectman. He certainly has strong feelings about the funding of SCEMS and also whether Deerfield has the proper amount of a vote related to what they pay for that service. John Petrarch, I appreciate you making the time. Enjoy your vacation, and we'll talk to you when you come back. Thank you. And we'll keep following this. This uh, South County Spotlight. Thanks for watching. For all of us here at FCAT, have a good day.